Okay. So the question is, uh, last week we touched on several different terms. And uh, we'll be using while loops a lot, case structures a lot. We mentioned a watchdog timer and tunnels, local variables. And when we get into the robot project, there won't be local variables. There will be global variables, but they're hugely valuable for a number of reasons. And so use the chat box to respond to this list of questions, if you would. Just kind of uh, tell me where you stand with respect to some of this stuff. And uh, the first question is, are we going too fast or too slow or too easy? Or how's the speed of things so far? So if you chat me what your what your opinion is or your vote, if just fine is good too. Just trying to get a consensus on what the pace is. So take a couple seconds, everybody kind of type in a couple words. And then the second question is, does anybody remember what a watchdog timer is or what it's for? I see a yes or no is good enough because so you don't have room for an explanation. I may, I may put you on the spot if you answer yes, but a watchdog timer is uh, hugely valuable. And then do you remember what a shift register is? Or do you recall talking about it? Yeah, and that's that's what I want to know is no is a good answer because that means I need to repeat it because we'll be using a lot. Um, and, and probably the first example I get into is going to be including both. Um, how many were able to complete all the examples or almost all the examples that we've sent out so far? Have you been able to do that? Good. <laughs> I like that. All right, guys, you, you're exceeding expectations. Is there anyone completely lost? Ernesto, you don't have to worry about that. Because you almost don't count, I mean, as far as history so far. So is anybody completely lost? Okay, so if if you don't get the emails, make sure you chat to me your email address, um, so I can I'll send you out the notes from tonight. And then the, the question is, and the reason for these questions is, do you want to cover more details on the exercises, or do you feel you're ready for jumping into the robot? Um, and from the looks of things, people are uh, keeping up with the exercises pretty quick. So I guess I'm curious about who's anybody not wanting to jump into a robot. And then the final question, do you have a joystick? Yeah. Do you have a joystick? And this is, this is not a showstopper at all. I just want to know. Yeah, and you're making a good point. Um, I don't know about the PS4 controller, Gabe. We'll have to we'll figure that out. The we'll be going through. We'll be using these exercises as part of the robot project. And uh, I wanted to touch on a couple things before we do that. And and the thing I wanted to emphasize was this business about nested loops. So I sent this example out separately. It's a servo scanner, and it ends up being a very simplistic uh, numerical addition. This is a while loop. This is a shift register with this little arrow up and down. And what it means is we're going to start the first execution with the value 0, and during the 
the execution of the while loop, it's going to add whatever number comes up from this selector down here. Now, the first the first time through, there's a true signal coming in, so that means it's going to take the value of one. So it's going to add one to zero, and then the value is going to be sent out to this uh, signal line here, and it's going to be examined by these two conditional statements. One is it says, is the number greater than 69? And the other one says, is the number less than negative 69? And if neither of those conditions exist, then the signal passes straight through the nested loops and then returns for the next loop execution. And the value 1 is then taken, incremented, compared against the two numbers, and sent through. Now, when we get up to 69, It'll, it'll execute one more time, and then the next value is 70. When it gets to 70, this signal here goes true, and so our outside uh, case structure goes to the level of true. And for the next execution, the return value is 68, and then our truth, or rather our Boolean value, gets carried through as a false. And so the next execution, you'll have 68 coming in here and a false coming in here. And then the counter starts counting down. And, and quite literally, it just scans between those two numbers. So here's how it's going to look. And this is a technique that's used to basically rotate a radar or a vision acquisition system or a sonar. And in addition to the function, um, anybody want to guess how we would speed up the scan rate? Any thoughts? Um, you could make the loop faster. Okay. And add more each time. All right. So, exactly. So let's make the loop faster. Instead of 20 milliseconds delay, let's put in 10 milliseconds delay. And I don't want to, I don't want to add it more first. Let's just see how this works. And sure enough, it's going faster. And so then the other alternative, and this, I'm going to go back to 20 on my delay. And we're going to add two instead of one. And make it a negative two. And so this is, again, something that we can utilize uh, a lot when we're controlling the robot is a loop like this. Now, and you can imagine once we recognize something or we identify an object that we want to track, we would stop the scan and then control the, uh, the mechanism either with the, the image on a screen or the, uh, the feedback we get from a sonar system. OK, so that's, that's the function of nested loops. If you look at this closely, so you can see if we, the way this works, you always nest inside the false value of the outer loop. And then you put the criteria for that particular function. And the result of, of exceeding the criteria inside the true function. So if it, if the signal gets less than six, negative 69, it'll return 68, something inside of the, the bracket and then swap the value for the scanner. I think it's a pretty clever design. OK. Then the next thing I wanted to show you, and this is going to come up a lot, is, let me find, uh, is the example for uh, flat loops. Um, and I can't talk and click at the same time, so I'll have to go find it. A flat sequence. And you'll see this as soon as we start. It'll be the next class or the next first class next week. And what this amounts to is a flat sequence like this. And we mentioned before, time is a, a an element that we can control real nicely with a while loop. So I've got a while loop set up with a 10 millisecond uh, wait time, and it's running every 200 
uh, loops, which would give me a two second delay. So I'm going to left click and, and select this while loop, hold down control, and then drag that loop into each frame. I've set up my indicators, green, yellow, and red, and a count um, indicator. And with the, the local variable, I've set up the, the three values up here. I've connected the count to my loop counter in each of the timing elements of the frame. And now I'm going to copy the uh, indicators into each frame, hold down control, left click and drag. And then I'm going to change the value that I want to display for each frame. So in essence, and you do so with a white knuckle. So in essence, I want to have the green light on for two seconds, the yellow light on for two seconds, and then the red light on for two seconds. And these are being displayed by this while loop down here. And then I want to stop when this last loop finishes. So I'm going to take the while loop condition output signal and with a spool of wire, left click and stop both loops at the same time. Make sense? And here's how it looks when it runs. So you can see it's counting the two seconds as it goes through. Now, um, just as a point of order, it's not, it's not that practical most of the time in the robot uh, project. But if I can run this in single step mode, those of you that are familiar with uh, programming, it's sometimes useful to single step through a program to see what things are, are working. That's the function of this little light bulb on the top menu bar. It's called highlight execution. And once I highlight it, and now I run, it show, you can see the signals pass through the program for each each loop. And so here we're counting on second loop, third loop. We can see we have true, false, false for our outputs. And so it's it's step, stepping through now in a, in a program in blank with the blank VI. This becomes kind of nice to see how the program possession uh, progresses. And for that reason, I might want to put in, let's say, a 10 loop stage just so I can see it, to make sure things are doing what I want. But you can see it progress through now, uh, again, at a single step, there's one <laughs> for practice, practical value, I probably should have done a five loop, but you get the idea. And the reason I say it's not practical for the robot is because it's a much more complicated and complex uh, interactive system. Um, but there are times when it does give you a clue what's wrong with your program. Any questions about flat sequences? Is this making sense? Yeah. Um, if you wanted to say... Um do those three things in the flat sequence um, again and again and again. Uh, uh, is there some way to do that? Or is it just as soon as it's through the flat sequence, it stops? Uh, no, I can do both. I can put a while loop or I can put, put a for loop and say for three iterations, for three times through the loop, repeat this sequence. So uh, you'll see where, where I use this is an autonomous. And it gives me the ability to do a very precise movement and control of the robot uh, without having the driver interface with it. And so I, I come up with things like U-turns, where it's a more precision uh, uh, exercise that sometimes is difficult for a, a live operator to perform on the stage or on the court. 
Okay, any other questions about plat sequence? Okay, so drum roll, please. I'm going to close all this. Everybody can follow me uh, on this. We're going to start with a new FRC robot project. So I'm going to click on this center. Everybody ready for this? I don't want to get too far ahead of you. Oop. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Uh, yeah, the, you can check back into the meeting when you get a chance. So uh, FRC robot project, click once. Everybody call it, I'm going to label it 2021 so we can find it again. Maze, M-A-Z-E, no joy. I don't mean to make everything capitals, but that's it. All right. And under my team number, I want to put my, you want to put your team number. And I think I'm... Uh, 3243, and I want to select Learn Lab View Mac Macanum Maze Simulation. All right, so 21, 2021 Maze No Joy, team number, and then Learn Lab View Macanum Maze Simulation, and click Finish. And it takes just a second to build a robot project. Now, we'll talk a lot about the robot project over time. But the first thing I want to do is start to show you how some of these exercises we've been doing can be incorporated and uh, allow us to see how to control a, rob a robot with them. Now, you'll see as we start doing this, there are a couple things that get loaded that get lost or the system can't find the particular folder, and I'll show you how to deal with it when it comes up. And right now it's taking a little bit longer just because I've got this go to meeting thing. But once it's all done, it shows me the robot project explorer. So that's what this frame looks like. What's your team number? Um, yeah, this is, I think it's a team number. 3243 page. Okay, and I'll explain why that's important uh, when we get, to get going. All right, everybody got the Project Explorer? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll worry about dashboards later. We're just worrying about the robot, Robo Rio now, my bad. Okay, I'm, anybody that doesn't have uh, the Project Explorer displayed, let me know. So I don't want to leave you behind here. I don't. My uh, computer is not allowing me to make the FRC robot project. For some reason, it's telling me there's an error. Okay. Well, in that case, watch what I'm doing. And once, once we get that straightened out, you'll be able to repeat this. Everything we're going to be doing, or the only place we're going to be making changes is in this line called Team Clothes Code. So click on the plus sign. And these are the different VIs that are all incorporated in a robot project. There's a, there's a couple of VIs that are special, and we'll talk about those separately. But for now, we want to open up teleop.vi. And look, and so this shows us the front panel. Click on Window to show Block Diagram. Page, you can just watch mine. And that's the problem with trying to follow along. Sometimes you won't be able to see mine. Okay, what we're seeing here is, at least in the robot project uh, for this, in this case, is how the motors are connected to the joystick. 
and what we see on the left where it says drive motors this is the channel the name of the channel for the drive motor control is connected to a drive icon called uh, holonic there's three different types of drive systems there's a tank drive an arcade drive and our holonic drive and we'll we'll get in explaining that in a second and then finally this last icon in the chain it says robot drive motors and then the icon shows an sd that stands for smart dashboard and the function here is writing the motor values to the smart dashboard and so we'll be able to see them displayed on the dashboard itself now the next row of icons below that starts off starts off with a joystick and when you notice this is joystick zero this is going to be the first one in the usb progression um, and that's the name of the channel that's been uh, set up already and then the second icon here is says get values the orange lines are analog or numeric values and so this is the joystick the, the uh, actually it's an array of joystick values this next in oh if you go up to the help icon at the top help menu label and select show context help as you hover over each of these icons it'll explain at least in brief detail what that function is doing so this icon that says index an array this basically takes the array that's coming out of the uh, get values icon and allows us to look at them in order it demultiplexes them and since there's no number there it's starting with the number zero and so this is one value of the axis it turns out it's the x-axis now this is one of those things where they don't explain it anywhere but if you look read between the lines and we follow up this first orange line we see it goes to an input that's identified as the x-axis on the holonic drive do you see what i'm talking about I'm going to turn my context help off just because it's in the way. If I hover over the drive icon for Holomnic, I can't even pronounce it. The first little orange line on the top left indicates it's X, which means it's the X axis input from the joystick. So that tells me the first index, first value of the array is the X value. The next one is the y axis, and the third one is the third numeric value. And I don't remember which one it is on my joystick, so at this point I don't care. Um, and then these icons down here again display the, the value of the joystick axis on the smart dashboard, and then the green line is the button an array of button values and again we're displaying them on the dashboard and we're indexing array to look at the buttons anybody have a question about any of that it may not make that much sense yet but when you see it in action it'll be kind of cool yeah when you talk about indexing the array i'm not sure what that means but i trust you'll explain it yeah well it just means so an array is a list of stuff you know, there's a list of axis values there's a list of buttons and it's it's a re it's a circular display a circular output and so indexing means okay I'm, i want you to start with this number and so with no norm, number on my indexed array i'm starting with the zero value so this is going to be the first usb excuse me the first uh, joystick axis coming out of in fact that's why if you remember i went through the uh, we're going to do it right now let's go back and talk about that okay so i'm going to close this out not change anything and not save anything at the same time i'm going to open up the robot main robot main is a special vi 
and we don't do changes here, but this is a supervisory program. And if we look at the window show block diagram, this shows the time element and the state machine for running the whole robot. And that's going to be important uh, on how we design our program later on, knowing how these different elements relate to each other. So right now, I just want to know it's there. I'm going to close the block diagram and leave the main, the front panel open. Now I want to go open up my driver's station. So I go back to my start screen, FRC driver station. And I'm going to get two displays. One, one's the driver uh, station itself. And the next is the dashboard. And it's going to, I'm going to allow access to my, through my firewall. Okay, everybody good with this? Do you have a driver station and a dashboard? Okay, again, what, what I was talking about, if I, I'm on the driver station, I come down here on the left tabs to the uh, fourth one down is the USB device. And when we select that, on the driver station, we show, come on, come on. Well, I can see that I have a joystick plugged in. I just want to know what the joystick. Page might, I'm having a delay on mine, so you may not be the only one. Okay, there it goes. It's, it takes a while to catch up. Okay, so right now, the array for the joystick axis goes through this list right here. And if I index it at zero, this is the first one that I'll get out of that icon. And right now, it's the X axis from my, my left joystick. Everybody with me? So when I index it at zero, if I index it at one, it would start with this value. If I index it at two, it'd start with this and then dump it out in order. So there's there's reasons to know that, but for right now, we're just staying with, with zero and one. Okay. I'm gonna come back to the driver station, the uh, operator display. Yeah, there's a question. Go ahead. You're breaking up. Okay, here's what's going to happen. And, and uh, this, I have a question. Say again. Is Your microphone yeah, is breaking up. It's with the drive station. Um, I was looking at. I need you to chat what you're trying to say because I can't hear you. I can't understand you. On the driver's station, I want to be in the, the what's called the operator operations tab. And again, the driver's station is a communication link between the program and the robot itself. I go back to the front panel on the robot main, and the fact that this little a uh, box down here says my computer that means we're going to run a simulation we don't have a physical robot to uh, launch i'm going to come up to the white run arrow on the robot main that's the only one that you start you don't start any of the team code without starting robot main and i click on run and it's going to open up this window which is my simulator and so this shows a maze. I'm going to click on the follow zoom off to show on. And I'm going to zoom in so, so I can see the, the robot itself.
everybody see a robot? This little object right there is a robot. Now, um, click on the driver display and then zoom out a little bit so you can see the wheels. These are uh, mechanum wheels that allow the robot to go rectilinearly so it can drive fro forward and it can drive left and or move left and right. And so it's an ideal situation for a maze that doesn't have cor uh, rounded corners. And there's other reasons to, but anyway, this so that makes it allows it to do what we call mechanum drive. So I'm going to go back to the side view. I'm going to go to the driver station and click enable. And when I get the green light, now with my joystick, I can move the robot around. Okay, Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. I noticed you had it present on the driver's station. Will I be able to use the said controller? You know, Andy, um, my guess is yes. And right now, if it's working, fine. If it's not working, uh, usually it's a function in the setup of the, of the joystick. And so it's kind of a Windows. It's the Logitech driver. So I, I think the answer is yes. You just have to make sure. In fact, in my case, I think I'm simulating. Um, depends on how how the Windows system presents the joystick to the driver's station. OK. Now, is anybody impressed that you can do this? First of all, I don't care. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to show off. In fact, it's a video game, and I want to close it off and talk something about something else, and that is simulating the dry, the joystick because it's real tough to handle. And it, the reason is, if you look at the, the dashboard, it's very tough to give a completely isolated front-back motion without accidentally including left-right at the same time. And that's what fouls up the fouls up the uh, navigation. All right, so use the close button on the simulator screen to stop the program. The close button only. Once you do that, you hear the driver station go bebop and and disable things. And we're ready to come back and talk about programming. OK. I want to open up teleop.vi again. Double click on teleop.vi and look at the block diagram. All right, so what the exercise is, and if you get hung up, um, don't, don't get bogged down in the weeds. Watch what I'm doing, and then this will be the, the assignment for tonight. But what we want to do is use these buttons and sliders in place of the joystick. The buttons and sliders refer to the dashboard controls under basic, where these are the buttons. And we're going to have a left, actually an X and a Y axis direction, and then the slider for the speed. And so we can say, OK, take the x value positive and go fast. Take the y value positive and go fast. That's the idea. And this is in the uh, in industry, it's called signal conditioning. So what we're going to do, everybody ready to follow this? I'm going to left click and drag and select just the center button channel name and then left click and pull it down below. I'm going to double click on this label for D buttons, DB button zero, and I'm going to call it X forward, uh, X left. So 
So when it's positive, we're going to be going left in the uh, X direction. And then under DB slider, zero, I'm going to select the whole, system, the whole set of icons, hold down control, use the pointer arrow, left click and drag, and take a copy down below. Now I have, instead of two DB sliders, I'm going to label this slider DB slider one down at the bottom. So now I have button zero, slider zero, button one, slider one. On my Boolean, I'm going to label it Y forward. In other words, if this, when this signal is positive, I want the Y uh, signal to go forward and my sample slider is going to be y speed which is more for my reference okay what we're going to be doing is replacing or reconnecting this combination of controls in place of the joystick so to do that i'm going to select and delete these two lines coming out of the joystick, doing a control B to get rid of the broken lines. I've cut out. It's, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe we're getting spotty connection. Okay. So watch while I, how I do this. If you recall, we've used the selector icon from the comparison tab. So I'm going to right click. Go to the comparison tab, left click on select, and then put it right here. I want to take this Boolean signal from my X left with a spool of wire and connect it to the center connection on my select icon. I'm going to right click on the top connection create a constant now page do you remember when we're going forward on the on the uh, joystick what signal we get what well, negative one or positive one do you remember what the output of the joystick is i think it was positive one well you had a 50 50 chance <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get it right. <laughs> it's negative one, but that's all right. So I'm going to put a negative one here. And thank you for giving it a shot. All right. So that's when we have this uh, positive, I want it to go negative into the motor. And then right click on the bottom one and make this a, create a constant of positive one. Now for the speed, how do we amplify the speed? If you If you look at the dashboard, and I move this slider, the value here goes from 0 to 5, right? Now, the signal on the joystick never gets above 1. So how do I change that number from 0, 0 to 5 to 0 to 1? Anybody have any thoughts? You could divide by 2 or to keep it simpler and better multiply by 0 0.2. Okay, so who was that talking? Somebody that's head of the class here. Hale. Okay, Hale. Good, good insight. So we got two ways of doing this. We can take from the numeric palette a divide by icon. Now we take the signal here from the slider, take it in the top, and then on the, the bottom, Create it constant and divide by two. Now, to make sure I've got this right, because it's not uh, independent of the direction, it's x divided by y. So I've got it correct. You see what I'm getting at? Oh, I've, you want to divide by five? I, I do want to divide by five. You want to multiply by 0 0.2. We'll do that on the next one. Okay, now then to combine these two, I need a multiplication again. I can't think and talk at the same time. 
And so this is called signal conditioning. When my signal is different than what I've scaled my operation to do, I have to condition it with these uh, different values. Now this is the x-axis, so I want to use a spool of wire, left click, take it all the way up to my holonic input, and make sure it connects to the left. Try that again. My context help was getting in the way. So I want it to be on the X input and looks like that. Now for the Y value, I want to do the same thing, but in my select, and this time, instead of using negative one and positive one, I'm going to use a negative 0.2 and a positive 0.2 to combine the steps. Make sense? That's where my two came from. Now correct on the bottom. And now I could just directly multiply times the, the slider value. And it doesn't matter which direction I, I place these because it's, I forget the term, Douglas, is it the identity? It allows me to A times B equals B times A. I don't remember either. It's a calling. Is it transitive? Ah, there you go. Commute? Well, I think it's transitive. I think you're right. It was it just. I think that's right, too. <laughs> Good. Well, the point is, when I got into LabVIEW, it made me realize why I took those classes in college algebra, because if I'm going to spend $100,000 on an engineer to design something, I want to make sure the rules he's using work every time. And that's why they make us go through the proofs. At any rate, uh, now we've got a condition signal going for the y-axis and a condition signal going for the x-axis. And let's see if it works. If I've got my white run arrow, that means everything's kosher, but I don't run the tally out by itself. I'm going to reduce it in size and come back to my robot main. And I want to display my dashboard up here so I can see it. Slide it over. And I want to run the robot main. I want to zoom in a little bit. I want to go to my dash, my driver station and enable. Now the first thing I want to do is to go forward on the X on the Y axis. So I take button one and positive and I didn't get my enable. And then I want to go left on the x-axis. And then forward on the y-axis. Anybody impressed yet? I'm impressing myself. It's, um, huh? I, I guess. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, it's it's a lesson learned in a, a bunch of different uh, facets. First of all, we're learning something about what it takes to control the drive system, and we're learning something about um, the X and Y controls on the Holonic drive, the Mackinum drive. Any questions? How did you get the blocks between like db button zero db slider zero and the selects you're running them into you mean that back on my uh back on the block tele -op? diagram yeah okay let me yeah until i have block diagram okay i'll stop playing with this just a second i'm having too much fun uh okay so i'm in tele -op.
Okay, so how did I get which now? So we started off with zero and one on the buttons and DB zero. So the way I moved it down, DB one button, I just did a small select so I didn't connect anything else and I just drug it down below to the bottom. Is that what you were asking? No, I was, there's those blocks in between like, for example, DB button zero and the X left. Yeah. How, how did you get that? Well, I didn't, I used what was here. Yeah. There's nothing there for me. Okay, in that case, okay, you're asking a good question. If I right click and I go down to WPI Robotics Library and I look at dashboard, the dashboard icons, I'm gonna, well, let me try it again, up her high. So you're right, everything in this um, should be somewhere in the library. So I'm gonna pin my dashboard and what I'm looking for is smart dashboard. I'm not looking in the right place. I want to be in the smart dashboard. This is network tables. One of the problems we're going to have is this is an older design and it's using icons that may no longer be in the in the library which looks like could be the case um They should be right here. They've always been right here. But these are showing network tables instead of smart dashboard, which means they've changed. Uh, so there's, there's something we can do that's more complicated. Did you pick, are you sure you picked the, uh, the maze, learn maze, learn whatever the FRC robot project Robo Rio was. Uh, yep, my mom, I did FRC maze, no joy, I named it that. And Okay, and you've got all everything and, else in there. Yeah, and I'm in teleop.vi. There's all the other programs, it's and, just and that. did your joystick work originally or when you used the joystick? I don't have a joystick. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. I just, um, the only way I can think to, to fix it is to send you the whole project from my installation and then let you, let you put that into your, uh, open it up as an example, which will work because my, okay, so let's let's handle that offline. That's a kind of a neat thing to try, but it's gonna come up again. Anybody else? So who is this that was just talking? Who was I talking to who, that didn't have the DB button icons? Um. Oh, me? Yes. Who are you? Yeah, Gabe. Thank you. Sorry, I can't recognize everybody's voice just yet. Anybody else have an issue, or is everyone able to? Um, when trying to run the um, run the robot dot main, yeah, I got a bunch of errors with uh, the pre compile. I guess Eric files over time, but pre run errors. Um, and when I was opening it, it asked me for a bunch of, uh, files, and I clicked, um, cancel on all of those, because I didn't know what it was asking me for. Well, um, so the only time 
that I've run into a similar problem is that when I try to relaunch this a second time, it'll it'll miss a, a I think a WinSocket program. So let me. I think this is the one I, one I just did. So when I the most common error I see, and so this is a library issue. Whenever it, the library that's part of this project isn't the one that you've installed, and that's nothing that you've done wrong. It has more to do with the the version of what got installed when we, and it could be even changing since it's the end of the season. But usually these are good until January eighth. But now the second time I'm trying to launch this, I usually see a, a WebSocket mistake. And the way I deal with it is it'll get done searching. And if it doesn't find it, and it's usually only the one file, I'll say OK or cancel, ignore that one item, and then from then on it's good. You don't want to ignore everything because you need all of that connection going on in the background. Anybody else having troubles? Oh, yeah. Yep. So I'm looking at Gabe's note. Uh, Why speed? How do you copy and paste? You got that. Tate, did you get? Yeah, you got yours. So my project came up a second time. I I can't even guess, hazard a guess, why your uh, project doesn't look the same as mine. Uh, I think it, I didn't select the the McKenna maze thing. Ah, okay. Well, I just realized. It's, yeah, go back and do it. Um, because how do other, you delete a project so I can? Don't, don't worry about it. Just. One. Don't worry about it. Just close it and then start a new one and, and rename what you want to call it. All right. They'll be stacked up there and you can race them in mass when we get done. Anybody else having issues? I just have a general FRT question. Okay. Um, I noticed uh, the robot it was using in the simulation had uh, mechanum wheels. Yep. Um, and what, what are the merits but uh, is our mechanic wheels considered to be like a um a ideal drivetrain in frc like they are in ftc no or, no they're okay. ideal if you have a rectilinear problem that you have to deal with mm -hmm. they're not so much for other reasons they can't hold they can't hold a braking situation very well because you have rollers that you don't control so you can't get on a climb and then stop all the time. Um, and that's why it's worth playing with this stuff before you start. There's uh, the same. I don't know how you guys got the link to install LabVIEW, but there's a link that talk about a control system and robot design that goes through all of these different variations and and recommendations on on drive systems. Personally, I much prefer for autonomous control, I much prefer tank. And with a conventional drive system of either two or four motors, you can switch between tank and arcade in lab view and, and do rather nicely and have arcade for the driver's control and then tank for autonomous control. So anyway, I, I can't answer that question <laughs> after talking for five minutes. Anybody else? Uh, By the way, just for everybody's knowledge, a holonomic vehicle, it's a dynamic term. It refers you. to one where you can independently control the X motion, the Y motion, and the rotation. And that's a good point, because uh, you'll notice I didn't do anything with the rotation. And I kind of, I literally violated if this was a, a, if this was a physical robot that we're playing with, 
I left a uh, control signal hanging out there without knowing what it was uh, tied to. And so it's the rotation. And if we take this out, in fact, what I would, what I do be for the next example, thank you for correcting my enunciation, is I want to set this rotation to zero so that it doesn't get in the way because it is connected to somewhere on my joystick. Okay, so where are we sit? We've, uh, all right, we've gone through the process of creating a, a maze no joy. And I recommend that you try this a couple different times and see how you can deal with this. Probably the toughest part is just making sure your mouse it's the right spot when you're hooking things up. Any other questions about the connections? What about the swerve drive? Swerve drive is different. What, you, what about it? <laughs> no. Oh, is, no. It considered, is it considered ideal for, well, not necessarily ideal, but is it, I, I mean, FTC was considered uh, like uh, irrelevant because of mechanical wheels and you don't really have friction um, constraints. Right. Um, but in FRC, although the, I, from my understanding, you can use more motors than in yes. FTC. Yes. So thus you can make a more um, practical swerve drive where you don't, we, we can use motors to rotate the wheels instead of having to use servos. Correct. So is, is the swerve drive more practical in FRC than FTC here? I think the, I've never dealt with FTC. I would think the answer is yes. There are papers and there are videos where people have done swerve drive and it does not look trivial whatsoever. So it comes down to the task being relatively advanced for a beginner team. And that's something you have to factor into your design cycle. Any other questions on this project and the modifications to Teleop? So where are we going after this? The next thing I want to do is we want to do autonomous. And let me see if I can show you what we're trying to accomplish. So one of the one of the benefits and and you'll see when we get into this i am not a conventional lab view teacher in that in that i i maintain you're better off putting all your controls in periodic task and we'll cover that in more detail in the future but one of the advantages is the ability to use a flat sequence uh, as, as a simplified autonomous, which shortens your design cycle. And you can literally have autonomous ready to go by the time you have your robot, before you have your robot built. And at least in, in my opinion, and what I'm about to show you is an example of that where I've taken the maze, I'll sh if I get it loaded, I'll show you. So we've taken the, uh, the ability to control the individual controls in the X and Y axis in the maze, and then set up a flat sequence to change those based upon time or the sonar uh, readings and uh, have a pretty good percentage of being able to drive through a fairly large portion of the maze. And so if this survives launching, we'll, we'll demonstrate it. And I had something I'm going to ask you to play with. So to, to kind of explain what I just said, um, and right now I'm, we're not going to deal with periodic task. In autonomous, looking at the block diagram, set up a flat sequence where I initiate, drive straight for five, uh, two seconds, to left for two seconds. And originally I did this strictly on time. 
then I ultimately brought in the sonar reading and used that to control or stop the motion. And then the rest of it was based upon time elements. And then I'm controlling the motors down here with a 10 second loop, which uh, survives the uh, watchdog timer. So with all that said, and we'll, we'll cover this in detail next week or next Thursday, it looks something like this and it works about two thirds of the time. As far as there's a little, little bit of uh, delay, sometimes the time issues get in the way. As far as the, I'm going to launch this. So this is an example of what I was trying to do. All right. and, and I've disconnected my, my joystick so I don't mess up the alignment. Then I enable my autonomous and We're going to enable the robot. Maybe. Right now it's having trouble with communications. Well, there we go. So it, it got all fouled up and still survived the, the excursion. But you guys get the idea. So let's let's try this again. Let me try it one more time before we give up. Do you guys get the sense of what I was trying to uh, accomplish with autonomous by using the flat? And we'll, we'll cover it in detail next week. I, I mean, next Thursday. So let's see how this looks. Autonomous. Try it again. No, nope. I need to adjust my sonar reading. So that the uh, stopping point. Okay, so that's a, any other questions tonight before we move on? Douglas, you had questions about the... Uh, about the state machine, did you want to talk about that tonight or wait for a later time? Let's wait for a later time. I, I want to play with what you sent me. I, it makes sense to me. I think if I play with it, I'll be able to get it. So the trick is, is setting up a enum icon outside of the uh, state machine uh, using editing the enum for your different states, connecting it to the case, and then in the control box for the case, right click and say assign a case for each value. And it's pretty straightforward from that point on. Anybody else have questions? Uh, yep, sonar is an ultrasonic sensor. Okay, um, so I'm going to send out the video. I'm going to send out a copy of the slides. I do have a slide that kind of walks through some of this setup for the No Joy Sim. And, uh, and then we'll talk next Thursday about how to pass along a whole project. <laughs> I'm glad we got that sorted out. Any other questions? I'll leave it open for a couple minutes as we sign off. Thanks for everybody's participation. Thank you, Jim. Uh huh. Thank you for correcting my English. That wasn't me. No. That was uh, <laughs> one of our parents. <laughs> Even better. Um, I have a question about the license. Yeah. I think I'm. I, I was initially downloading the software, but I think I, I ended up downloading the um, uh, uh, the the um, the 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 not the FRC version, but a different version. 
but most of the things look the same, so I think it is roughly equivocal. But the license being used is a trial license, so I think it expires like Thursday. Yep. Um, so how do I how do I get the uh, FRC license? Set up? You got to uninstall what you have. Okay. And then you got to go to the FRC uh, launch site and do all the steps that are required for that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, th thank you for the class. Sure. And uh, have a good day. Yeah, good day. Bye. So long.